Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay welcome back now we will discuss uh, own price elasticity of demand quite exhaustively how we can measure that given a demand curve how we can measure or whether that own price elasticity of demand along the different points of a demand curve is same or they vary all those things we will discuss now quite exhaustively. Okay. So, if you know the little bit calculus, so we told that own price elasticity of demand as denoted by say E subscript P that is delta Q D by Q D by delta P by P this into numerator it was 100 denominator is also it was 100 that 100 was due to percentage change percentage change and that if you simplify that will be delta Q D by Q D into P by delta P that also if we can write further delta Q D by delta P into P by Q D. Okay. So, if you if you in calculus notation we can write that del Q D del P into P by Q D okay. that way because this that delta amount no very fraction in the limiting sense when it is a continuous kind of your demand curve is continuous right. It is a limiting sense very small change that sometimes that change delta Q D is denoted by del Q no. So, using this calculus notation we can write this way as well. So, we will use this fundamental calculus in certain cases which will uh, to give you more fine tuned understanding of certain concepts which we will discuss here in this course. Okay. So, if you have a people who will who already have some calculus understanding because as I already mentioned earlier this course target audience is the undergraduate engineering students right. So, if the, so all of you have this uh, calculus exposure I, I am assuming of course, if you do not have any calculus of, uh, exposure like others who are not engineering student as such. So, you you look for those you can still proceed with this delta delta notation and to understand uh, on your own. In fact, the book we are following that book does not use this calculus notation, but we will use uh, in certain cases calculus notation that will fine tune our understanding that way okay. that will be very uh, easy to uh, understand for you people okay, in that way. So, this is our uh, elasticity of demand. Okay. So, now uh, let us try to measure that elasticity of demand uh, taking a usual demand curve. Okay. So, suppose we have this kind of demand curve usual downward sloping demand curve. So, of course, quantity demanded we are measuring in the horizontal axis, price we are measuring vertical axis as usual case and suppose this A B is our demand curve. So, we are taking not only it is an usual demand curve or downward sloping demand curve for the time being we are taking it is a linear demand curve also it is a straight line okay. and we will try to find out uh, what is the elasticity of demand or own price elasticity of demand at various point of that demand curve. Okay. To be specific look at here what is the what is the uh, definition of elasticity of demand okay. this is the definition of elasticity of demand this or this whatever delta or del whatever notation you are using right. Now, since it is a straight line I can tell slope of the demand curve here slope of the demand curve here slope of the demand curve everywhere slope is same and that slope is denoted by del p by del q this curve slope is del p by q because p is measured in the vertical axis and q is measured in the horizontal axis del p by del q or del q d whatever it is. Okay, what is our notation? Okay. So, so, since slope and look at here uh, the slope or reciprocal of the slope is only one component or one part of the entire elasticity component right. So, 
this is constant means at say point say C, D and E, three points we are taking on that demand curve. At C point, at D point, at E point, all the points delta Q D by delta P or del Q D del P whatever, okay. those things are same at each of the C, D and E point. But look at here at C point this is the P and this is the Q, this is suppose O, okay. suppose say M. So, at C point okay, okay, okay. at C point P is C M distance vertical distance and Q D is basically O M horizontal distance. At D point price is basically uh, D n vertical distance and Q D is basically O n horizontal distance and similarly for E point. So, if each of the C, D, E point, if you take this ratio, the remaining thing price by quantity demanded, it is continuously here at C point price by quantity demanded basically this distance by this distance. At D point price by quantity demanded is basically this distance and this distance. So, that price by quantity demanded if you compare that at C point and D point numerator is falling and denominator is increasing here at C point this was the numerator this was the denominator at D point this is the numerator and this is the denominator right at E point this is the numerator and this is the denominator right. So, as you are moving from C point to D point D point to E point all this ratio price by quantity demanded P by Q D ratio numerator is continuously falling and denominator is continuously increasing. So, P by Q D that ratio is continuously falling right. So, as a result we can tell at the C point whatever the elasticity of demand value at D point elasticity of demand value is less of course, one price elasticity of demand we are talking about they are less ok. Less in ok let me clarify when we are telling less less in absolute number because in all these cases elasticity of demand value is negative why negative because uh, look at here when you are moving from c to d point so suppose c to d point you are moving right so your quantity demanded is increasing by this ok 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 let us go to the next another average diagram ok we are measuring Q or Q D whatever Q that side price that side this was our demand curve A B and suppose this is C point this is D point and this is E point right. So, our elasticity of demand own price elasticity of demand is del Q by del P into P by Q right Q Q D we are writing now Q simply ok to avoid or complexity in the notation. Okay, for ease of our understanding only. Okay. So, at C point and at D point both the cases this is the same, okay. but this thing is larger at C point vis a vis at D point. So, their product okay, one component is same another component is one point is larger another point is smaller. So, their product elasticity at C point should be. So, I am telling elasticity own price elasticity at point C definitely should be greater than absolute value own price elasticity at point D it is absolute value. Why absolute value? Because look at here. So, when you are moving from C to D that side your delta Q is what? Delta Q definitely greater than 0 positive because at C point this is your quantity at D point this is your quantity. So, D point quantity minus C point quantity that is the delta means meaning delta Q means that right change in quantity right. So, that quantity is positive change in quantity is positive. Now, the price dimension if you see 
C point to D point at C point this was the price and at the D point this is the price. So, if you consider delta P later price minus the initial price right. So, later price is smaller earlier price is earlier uh, larger. So, definitely delta P is less than 0 in this case. So, so this is ok whatever value del q, so del q del p that thing is negative along with any point of that straight line a b that demand curve because that is the slope, slope is negative ok. And p by q to always positive, it is a fraction, but it is always positive both price and both quantity both are positive quantities right. So, that this is always positive and this, this is always negative. So, their product is always negative. So, one price elasticity of demand is always negative if we take a usual demand curve downward sloping demand curve right. Since price is increasing quantity is falling means price and quantity is moving opposite direction elasticity one price elasticity of demand will be always negative if we take a usual demand curve downward sloping demand curve right that is understood. So, when we are telling so that is why when we are telling that elasticity value at C point is larger than elasticity point value as D point ok definitely that larger in the sense that absolute value sense right. Now, that absolute value in C point elasticity value and D point elasticity value why C point elasticity value is larger than D point elasticity value I hope everybody understood. Because this P by Q ratio is more at C point vis a vis at D point. Although del Q by del uh, del P del Q del P that value is same at C point and D point both the points are same ok. So, so what we are getting a message? even if we have a straight line demand curve whose slope is not changing along different points ok. Elastic one price elasticity of demand or more specifically absolute value of one price elasticity of demand is changing from one point to another ok. Now, the question is since it is changing what is the absolute elasticity value at C point that is not the same at D point that is not the same at E point and so on. So, how we can measure at various points of that? ok at C point what is that value at D point what is that value and so on how we can measure ok that is our agenda now. So, let us take an appraise appraise sheet to clarify that how we can measure ok fine. So, we are measuring quantity in the horizontal axis price in the vertical axis and suppose A B is the demand curve ok. So, look at here suppose we are at the k point and l point. So, we are moving from k point to l point ok. So, definitely suppose this is O and this is say z point this corner is the z point. So, definitely here delta q is z l distance and delta p is z k distance in this particular case ok. And price at k point price is ok ok. So, suppose z set t 1 and t 2 these two points ok. So, at k point ok. So, movement from moving from k to l along the demand curve we are going ok. So, of course, if we move from k to l along the demand curve given demand curve a b delta q is z l distance delta p is z k distance ok and P was definitely since you are starting from k point and landing to l point. So, from which price this change delta q and delta p is happening definitely initial price we have to consider that is k t 1 ok and initial quantity we have to consider that is o t 1 ok. So, now if we plot that delta q by delta p into p by q whatever thing we will land that will be the elasticity value at k point. 
So, you are moving from k to l, you are getting some elasticity value. Alternatively, if you move from l to k within the same segment of the demand curve, rather you are moving from the opposite direction from l to k. Look at here delta q and delta p in both the cases will be the same distance with the opposite sign. Earlier delta q was positive, now it will be negative and delta p earlier was negative, now it will be positive simply the opposite side, but distance will be the same right. But so in this particular case when you are moving from L to K that time what is the initial price and what is the initial quantity. So, initial price definitely in that case price will be initial price will be L T 2 instead of uh, K T 1 earlier okay. and initial quantity will be O T 2. So, look at here what we are getting within the same segment of a given demand curve that segment is k l denoted by in the in this picture. If you move from k to l whatever the elasticity of demand value you are getting if you move l to k you are getting a different elasticity of demand value right because that this value is different from where you are moving. If you move from k to l we have to consider this p by q that ratio what was at k point. Alternatively, if you move from L to K, you have to take that original P by Q ratio, what is that at L point, right. So, depending on that, and since delta Q delta P value just one is getting positive and another is getting negative, or they are, they are simply changing their sign, but magnitude is same. So, two elasticity, two different elasticity value we are getting. So, sometimes midpoint method is also used midpoint method which is discussed in your book midpoint method. So, first we introduce or we let us clarify ourselves why midpoint method may be thought of some sensible way to capture this elasticity because within the same segment of the demand curve if you move from one point to the other one elasticity value you are getting. If you move the just the from other point to the this point coming back within the same segment you are getting some different elasticity value. So, to avoid that we can have that say okay, within this segment what is the elasticity value do not take or let us do not take that this point price by k, what is the price by this p by q ratio what is at k point we do not consider let us also do not consider what is that value at L point rather let us consider what is the in the mid point between k and L what is that p by q value. In any case del q del p that will be constant along the entire line because it is a straight line we have considered ok. So, that will give you we have to take the middle of that means basically mid point in between this and mid point in between this that will be because it is a straight line. So, this at this point whatever p by q value that you take or in a sense that or alternatively this 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 distance you take ok. In this green color this distance you take at the as the price and this distance you take as the quantity that to get this p by q, q component and this to in any case you have this this is the delta q and this is the delta p with appropriate sign. Right. So, that is the midpoint method, midpoint is method is telling that uh, you take the middle of the two points within which a movement is actually happening ok. But midpoint method is little bit what should I say more crude kind of way to measure that is one measure although that is there only in your book. Let us now discuss the actual method because since we are moving if we move from k to l that is capturing one phenomenon alternatively we move if we move from l to k it is capturing completely different phenomena. So, those things should be captured by the different elasticity value ok. So, at k point what is the elasticity value at l point what is the elasticity value and so on does not matter whether from l point I am moving this direction or we are moving that direction does not matter ok. Each and every point how we can calculate the elasticity value let us discuss that 
that is called specific method or point method. Okay. Instead of that this is basically called midpoint method. So, let us go to discuss now the specific point wise elasticity value how we can calculate. Okay. Sub, as usual we are measuring quantity in the horizontal axis, price in the vertical axis right? and we are still taking a straight line demand curve say A B. We are interested to know what is the elasticity of the own price elasticity of demand value at say point say this point is say suppose k at k point. Okay. So, of course, since we have to know that delta q delta p Okay, since we, uh, since we have to take delta Q delta P, right? Since it's a straight line, okay. So that delta Q delta P does not matter which directions I am going this side that side because that straight line by virtue of it is a straight line its slope is fixed. So, delta q delta p this ratio is always the same at every point that we told earlier right because that is the slope of the line or this more specifically reciprocal of the slope because we are vertical axis we are measuring p right reciprocal of the slope. So, at this point what is the elasticity value then definitely that depends on this price and this quantity value. So, O, so O k suppose this is m and suppose this is n, suppose this is l and this is O. Okay. So, okay. so, let us take that this is our say z. So, suppose we are taking that, we are taking that k z is the delta p of course, okay. z l is the delta q of course, right. And we are taking k m as the original price, when we are taking k m is the price that means we are telling that we are moving from k to l point, right. This side we are moving, okay and definitely O m is the original quantity right. Okay. Suppose these two points are S and T. Okay. Now, so as per the own price elasticity of demand that will be del q del p into p by q with a negative sign of course. So, for the time being we are, so I am writing absolute elasticity value. Okay. So, that must be del q del p into p by q that is the definition. Now, instead of del q del p I am writing del q is basically z l, del p is basically k z and into p by q, p by q is p, p is basically k m by q is o m right. Okay. Okay. Now, look at here by virtue of the fact that triangle k z l and triangle m aha, and triangle k z l yes that triangle and k m b this two triangle. So, k z l means this small triangle and k m b means this big triangle right. So, clearly we are seeing that these two triangles are similar, they are similar triangles. Okay. But by the 
properties of the similar triangle we can surely tell that this by this ratio definitely this by this ratio or say k z by z l that must be equals to k m by m b because k z l and k m b these two triangles are similar. So, that is why k z by z l must be equals to k m by m b that is the from the properties of the similar triangles. So, that we can write z l by k z just the reciprocal both side we are taking that must be equals to m b by k m. Now, instead of this k z by z l in elasticity of demands equation, if we replace this by this because this is this. So, this and this are same. So, this thing we are replacing by this. So, that will be m b by k m into k m by o m right. So, this k m this k m cancel out we are landing m b by o m right. Now, m b by o m means what? m b is this distance and o m is this distance right. Let us now consider another pair of triangles one is triangle k m b and triangle k t a. So, this downward big triangle k m b this big triangle uh, say red color that triangle we have drawn no this big triangle and this blue color triangle say this blue color triangle k t a k t a these two triangles are also similar. So, the by virtue of their similarity property look at here this o m o m this distance and k t distance are same. So, instead of o m I can write here numerator is m b as it is and denominator instead of o m I am writing k t right. Now, so it is basically this distance by this distance is the elasticity value absolute elasticity value. By virtue of that fact that this triangle and this triangle and similar can I tell that m b by k t m b by k t is exactly equals to k b by k a because these two triangles are similar. So, this by this definitely this distance by that distance right from the similarity property. So, what we are landing we are landing that if we have a, a linear downward sloping usual and straight line demand curve at a point what is the absolute value of the elasticity of demand or own price elasticity of demand this distance by that distance that message we have proved here ok. Let me summarize that thing ok using a using a phrase diagram. Okay. Suppose this is our demand curve downward sloping or usual demand curve, but straight line also at this point absolute value of the own price elasticity of demand will be this distance by that distance. At this point absolute value of the elasticity of demand will be this distance by that distance. So, if you have a straight line downward sloping demand curve, it will cut the two axis, two vertical axis and horizontal axis. So, its segment that elasticity own price elasticity of demands absolute value at a point on that demand curve is basically distance from that point to the vertical horizontal axis where it is cutting the demand curve is cutting by the distance of that point from the vertical axis where demand curve is cutting. This is the vertical axis where demand curve is cutting ok. So, that is the thing. Using that result we can tell that definitely at B point that elasticity value is 0 because down lower portion is 0 upper portion is the entire AB distance. 
at a point it is infinitely large or undefined because lower distance lower point is I mean numerator is a b and denominator is 0 right. So, a point that own price elasticity of demand is infinitely large or sometimes you can tell undefined at b point this is 0 at the mid point of this demand curve it should be 1 because lower and upper the same distance it should be 1 at the mid point mid point of this a b demand curve it should be elasticity value of 1. So, suppose this is the mid point say c point is the mid point any point in between c b segment any point in between c b segment elasticity value is less than 1 any point in between c a segment elasticity is greater than 1 this is the thing right. So, we can easily find out given a straight line demand curve at various points on that demand curve what is the absolute value of own price elasticity of demand right. Now, the question is what is the guarantee that in real life whatever demand curve we are facing although it is uh, usual or downward sloping it will be a straight line demand curve alternatively or I can pose the question in a different way. Suppose we have a downward sloping usual demand curve, but it is not straight line it is a general hyperbolic curve. So, how we can measure that ok. So, to measure that what we have to do ok suppose 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 uh, say this is our demand curve suppose ok this is our demand curve which is a general hyperbolic kind of demand curve, but it is not straight line at this point I want to find out what is the elasticity of demand value at that point on that demand curve. So, advice is that you draw a tangential straight line on that demand curve at the point at which you want to find out own price elasticity of demand and treat elasticity or calculate elasticity of demand value as if your demand curve is this tangent. So, whatever value you will get at a point c if your demand curve say may be m n is your demand curve in the diagram you can easily find out what is the elasticity of demand at a point that value will be the elasticity of demand at or absolute value of own price elasticity of demand on the demand curve say d d 1 demand curves hyperbolic demand curve at point a. So, today we have very elaborately discuss given a demand curve does not matter given an usual demand curve does not matter whether it is a linear or it is non linear how to find out own price elasticity of demand on various point on that demand curve. If it is straight line it is very easy lower segment by upper segment ok the point where you want to find out the elasticity of demand value consider the ratio of the lower point in the numerator and upper segment is the denominator. If you are unfortunate that demand curve is not straight line rather is a general hyperbolic kind of non-linear demand curve. The point on which you want to find out elasticity of demand at that point draw a tangent on the curve given to you on the demand curve given to you. Treat that tangent as if the tangent itself is your demand curve find out elasticity of demand on the given point ok treating the tangent itself as if it is your demand demand curve. So, tangent is a linear line. So, you can easily find out following the person lower portion by upper portion. So, uh, on d d 1 along the d d 1 demand curve at point a own price elasticity of demands absolute value is basically a n e p it is absolute value is basically a n by a m that is it ok. Although you are asked to or you have been asked to find out elasticity of demand value at a point on the demand curve d d 1 ok that is the message that is the learning you keep in your mind we will discuss or we will play around using different types of demand curve and their respective elasticity of demand value in the next lecture. Let us stop here today and take care.